Fox 17 Rock and Review on the road, and we've got the uh, the legend, the icon, Charlie Pride, 70 million records sold worldwide, uh, 36 number ones, uh, Country Music Hall of Fame, the Grand Ole Opry. Geez, Charlie, you've done a lot. Yeah, it's been good. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a brand new album out now, which is Music In My Heart. And, you know, you're working with some old friends, and, and you've even got a song by Bill Anderson on here. Yeah, first time I ever recorded one of his songs. And, and uh, I, I've been acquainted with Bill. In fact, he, his syndicated sh TV show that he had was the first one I ever did. Really? And I'm just getting around to not, well, I, I'll say it this way. I recorded a song that Bill Anderson and, and Steve Warner wrote, but it's, it's not. I, I, but I was going. I'm going to go back and do it again. It, it really? wasn't. It wasn't done good enough. So, but this is the first release that I've ever. First song of build I've ever done and released. Well, it's amazing. You know, it's so funny because I, I told a number of my friends that I was coming to to meet with you and interview you, and your voice is so iconic. And, and we were talking about you know your early days to where Chet Atkins signed you to RCA, mm -hmm. and and really you know and people like Red Sovine and everything helped put you on the map, Charlie. Yeah. It was, uh, I tell you, I think about it a lot, and I, but I do appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I was going to ask you, too. Now, I, I was reading about you with your, with your great history with, between baseball and music. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you got your first guitar when you were 14 years old. Yeah. And I, uh, I picked cotton about that, too. That's and that was back in Sledge, Mississippi, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how did you end up so ingrained in the, in the country music as a young child? Well, my dad, uh, my dad, uh, listen, he, we had old Phil Cole radio. Yeah. That Phil Cole radio never went on any station but what my dad said it went on. So <laughs> on Saturday nights, that's when we would get, uh, we would get the Grand Ole Opry and uh, I got hooked on what you hear right today yeah. I mean, from a very young age and I, I, about that guitar, I have to say this because it's the truth. I bought it from, my mother ordered it from Sears Roebuck and we got it like, we lived out in the country. Mm -hmm. And I was out by the wagon near the lot where all of the pigs and the hogs and everything, and that's where the, the wagon was. And I was messing around with it in the wagon and went to bed and left it in the wagon and it rained. Oh no. Uh, yes it did. And I never could keep it in tune. And uh, I, that's what I think about I, it. Before it just completed, <laughs> you know, it's only glued together. Oh yeah. And so I've always, I'm sure that uh, Country Music Hall of Fame would love to have. I, I kept a neck for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> but, I bet you the Country Music Hall of Fame would love to have the whole yeah, guitar. If you I had would it. love. I'd love for them to have it. But well, you know, and, I, and through the years too, because I, you know, I've seen you on TV so many times and in concert and everything, Charlie. You've played a number of uh, really nice Martin guitars, and in fact, inside the new album, I see you've got a, a vintage Martin guitar in your hand. Uh -huh. Did you use that in studio while you were recording, also? No, I don't. Uh, the only time I ever played guitar in the studio was on uh, uh, the song called "We Could." Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, I'm not good enough picker to pick it. <laughs> <laughs> you pick it in the studio because I, I played it. I, I played it the straight open bar chords until I start recording. So well, you know, I got to I got to bring up uh, Charlie. You know, we were talking about. Uh, your baseball career and and what's interesting to me is that when you were playing baseball and, and obviously moving up through the leagues and everything you were also still playing guitar you know in between mm -hmm. and then in 2010 you became a part owner of the Texas Rangers yeah uh, Nolan Ryan called my uh, booking agent we were all in uh, over in Ireland and he said Nolan Ryan has been trying to get in touch with you he says uh, He's trying to put together a group to buy the Texas Rangers from Tom Hicks. I wonder if you would be interested. I said, I believe I'd be interested. <laughs> so, so that's the way that came about. And uh, and and I'm glad because, uh, you know, we, we're not doing too well right at the moment, but uh, we didn't do too well last year in April, but we ended up winning our – so I'm gonna, I'm not I'm not a kind to give up, you know. But well, we've we've got a lot of fans of the team too, in, yeah. including one of our uh, producers here. I wanted to bring up as well, you know, a lot of viewers may not realize, Charlie, that you still go and and do the spring practice too, the spring training with them. Yes, I've been, I've been doing that uh, since well, every manager since uh, Ted Williams. Well, and you that. were recruited. 
Uh, not by then. <laughs> <laughs> I've recruited the Titus by but Nola mine. Right, right. You mean by the Texas Rangers? Yeah. No, no. I I signed with the Yankees uh for my first time. At least my mother did. I was too young to sign. Wow. Uh in nineteen I was in my teens, nineteen fifty, right. nineteen fifty three. Mm -hmm. But uh I uh that's what's why I was gonna make it. You know, I was gonna go to major leagues, break all the records and set new ones by the time I was thirty five, thirty six, and then I was saying that's right. That's kind of the way I had it kind of figured, but it didn't. but did you ever imagine though also that you know from listening to that old Philco radio you know with your family that that then years down the road you would be on the Opry stage and instead of no. breaking records with baseball, no. you broke records with music. And did I ever of, imagine I'd be there? And one of the no. first mega stars, African American, mega stars in country music. Oh, I, you you really opened the doors for a lot of artists, Charlie. Well, I, I don't think of. Okay. Let me put it this way. I, I hit, get that a lot of time. Let's say <clears throat> when I was picking cotton beside my dad, I said, okay, when Jackie Robinson went to the major leagues, uh, uh, I said, well, here's my way. That's my, my thought, as young as I was, out of the cotton fields. I, so I thought about maybe if I could go to major leagues, break all the rack stands, set new ones by the time I was 35, 36, then I could maybe go sing, see? Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to try to do it that way. So, but uh, speaking about Breaking barriers and this sort of thing is a difference, though, in Jackie Robinson barrier breaking and my barrier breaking mm -hmm. in terms of the way it came out. Branch Rickey came to Jackie Robinson and brought him in and said, sit down the N-word. He said, the N-word, that's what I heard. And he kind of frowned at him. So, well, you said, we're well, going to hear that a lot. He said, now, what are you going to do? Are you going to either, said, you ain't going to say nothing. You're going to play your ball, your bat, and your glove. You're going to, that's because if you don't make it, the others ain't going to make it of y'all. You know, so he said, y'all, but I mean, that's what he meant. Now, here Charlie Pride. Yodely, yodely, yodely. He said, now, Charlie, sit down, N-word. Nobody, difference. I'm here by choice. So I didn't get, nobody sit me down and told me to go sing here mm -hmm. for us, them, and y'all, and that sort of thing, the way that turned out as, right. as comparing, comparing the barrier breaking. Mm -hmm. But now, if it's good for me, which I wasn't asked to do that the way that Jackie was, if it's breaking barriers, whether it be the, my color or the green, the purple, or what, it's all right with me. Mm -hmm. But I'm here by choice. So that's the difference right. in, in the comparison situation. So that's well, and, I and I think that your voice and, and your, your emotional delivery and, and the songs you choose, I think it transcends. Yeah, uh, because uh, when I, you know, when I sing now, uh, I mean, I'll just tell this. When I was in uh, in England, there was a guy by the name of Billy Daniels. That old black magic has me in its spell. I said, well, I was off. We were two and about the same time. And there was, I said, I'm going to see this guy. He was about 65 years old. And boy, he went, that voice was still. I said, man, I hope when I get 65, my <laughs> voice. Now, I just finished about four days ago up in Marksville. And then when I got through and got on the elevator, this guy said, Charlie. Your voice sounded as good as it did when you were 25, 30 years old. <laughs> well, I love to hear that. So right. it, I've been blessed to be able to do longer than Billy Dangle, mm -hmm. that old black magic. So, right. so that's, it's, so I, like I say, I'm in the business of selling lyrics, feelings, and emotions. Mm -hmm. Not every song that I sing, I don't just sing, you got to kiss an angel good morning and let her know. You've got to, you just, you, you see, you, you've got to. Well, 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 with that song too, you know, with Kiss an Angel Good Morning, it was so powerful. Good you know, lyrics. I mean, lyrics. lyrics, lyrics and emotion. Right. Lyrics. lyrics. Give me a good. But you song. could tell you were feeling it when you sang it. When not you just heard that it on the one. radio. This not just them. Go back. All I've recorded five hundred and some songs, and I've, I'm second only to Elvis Presley. That ain't my discography. This is RCA before they sold it to Sun. Right. It's on it. So I'm saying that uh, they didn't just buy because I only had one million selling single. They didn't just buy. They bought those albums because. Jack Clement, my producer, said, Charlie, every song that we sing, if the song is an A song, we're going to make it a double A. If it's mm -hmm. a triple A, we make it a double, double, triple A. We like sing every song we'd like to re 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 reflect to it as it could be a single. Yeah. And that's why I believe I sold so many albums over those years. I totally agree with of, you. Of, of that, of that was his philosophy. So, mm -hmm. And I go back now and I listen to some of my songs back in 1966 or 68, and I was like, oh, that was better than I thought it was. <laughs> so, so it's, it's well, and cool. obviously your fans thought so as well, because yeah. they were, you know, yeah. coming to see you in concert and buying yeah. the albums. Yeah. 
Well, now I brought up also, besides, you know, I know with music in my heart, you know, just releasing and everything, coming out in July, you've also, you're already working on a second album, and I'd asked you if you're thinking about doing another gospel album. Well, we probably will. I, I love gospel music, and uh, but it, it's not it, nothing in the works at the moment, mm -hmm. specifically, but... But, but I'd heard that you had so much uh, fun in the studio recording this new album that you want to do more now. Yeah. I enjoy <laughs> doing this album. I, I think it's a good album, and I do believe that if we could get the airplay that we used to get, mm -hmm. no matter whether you want to call it modern or, but I'm a traditionalist, but I mean, put it with any other uh, pop or whatever, I think I could people got a chance to hear it, I think I could compete. Well, I, I'll tell you what, I think you've got an incredible album here, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure it's going to do well. Be sure and pick up a copy, Music In My Heart, the new uh, album from Charlie Pride, and it's coming out July 7th. Yeah. So July 7th, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be at the Grand Ole Opry, so you want to see Charlie there, and also he'll be doing some other concerts, and we'll be looking forward to a new album. Thank you, Mr. Dahl. Thank you so much, Charlie. Looking right. forward to seeing you and right. hearing more. All right.